mindset of Aaron Hernandez. And Judy, I want to bring you in for this. You know, here's a guy, he had a $40 million contract, a famous football player, tight end for the Patriots. And he is being accused of murder. And, and it goes to what is the mindset when it comes to the, the power and the money? Talk to me about that. Well, he had so much to lose. You know, you just mentioned he's this star in the, fo the football world and he had this $40 million contract. His teammates and America is counting on him. And sometimes when people get to that level, there's that desperation of, you know, what can we do to make sure that our lives don't change? And so whatever did happen, if he did, in fact, commit the murder, you know, the first thing in his mindset is to let's try to cover this up. What can I do to keep everything at the status quo? Because I like my life the way it is. And, you know, that really becomes what really takes over in his head in terms of his number one objective. Well, and you think about how different his life is now. Here's a guy that used to make $40 million, everything ripped away. He's now in a, a jail cell charged with first degree murder. I mean, we've seen other people fall from grace. What in past cases has it been like to go from this well-known football star to behind bars awaiting your murder trial? Well, it's like a huge fall from grace. You know, their, their lives are completely turned around a, a 180 degree difference. And I really don't know that they can actually handle the stress very well because they have become accustomed to the life that they had. And now it's not only the money that's ripped away, it's like his own respect, his self-esteem, you know, everything that really underlies somebody who has these types of problems. And I think in the past, when we've seen this happen to other celebrities, other well-known people, you know, they really do not adjust well at all. They, they actually adjust the most poorly, you know, according to research compared to people who may be from, say, middle income or lower middle class income families and households. And so Judy, there's a gap in their facts. Judy, I just have a, a quick 20 seconds, real quick. What do you, what do you think we're gonna see from Aaron Hernandez? What kind of, uh, you know, personality do we, do we think we're gonna see in this hearing? Well, then I think he's going to be very reined in. I'm sure his attorneys are coaching him on his behaviors and how he should be in the courtroom so that people can take him seriously. All right. Well, watch. Judy, let me bring you in because, you know, narcissism exists. It doesn't necessarily drive someone to murder. Absolutely not. I mean, I think sometimes it can be associated with crime, but not always. And I think in Aaron's case, there may be a sense of entitlement that he has. So I agree with that aspect of what Wendy brought up, you know, the celebrity, you know, the fact that maybe he can just get away with things because of who he is. But we have to also remember he does come from a family that was full of chaos. And so there may be something going on with his perception of the world and how people are treating him. He seems like he's extremely sensitive to criticism, being slighted in any way. And it's possible that whatever happened between him and Odin, if he actually did commit this murder, it was because he sent something even more larger than actually what happened interpersonally that was there that led him to feel like he was being attacked and so he had to retaliate. Okay. I absolutely agree. I think being a celebrity, hello? Yeah, can you ahead. hear me? Yeah, we can, can hear you. Can you hear me? Oh, there may great. be a little bit okay, of a delay, perfect. that's why. Got it, thank you. So Lynn, I, I absolutely agree. You know, being a celebrity comes with the brushes, but they come with the ups and they come with the downs and unfortunately i see aaron sort of like the way i see a lot of failed child stars you know what you were saying about the too much too soon he wasn't mature enough psychologically to handle any of this he came from a childhood and in an upbringing in a family environment that was so incredibly different and now he has a celebrity he has all of this money everybody is watching him and i really think that he crumbled under the pressure but wendy's also right that there was something else going on underlying that isn't normal the, the, the criminal behavior and people have let him get away with a lot of things the patriots signed him even though he did fail a drug test mm -hmm. and so there were places i think where people could have intervened and they didn't and you make it hear me oh yeah i'm right here <laughs> um you know, I, <laughs> so a little bit a little bit of a delay but um yeah, absolutely lynn and you know michael 
it was astounding that he actually recognized it in himself that maybe he should have gone to the hospital instead of that he didn't take his medication. You know, most people when they're at that stage of mental illness, they don't have that self-recognition. And I think Antoinette saw this as a window where she could really reach in and be there for him and give him what he needs. The fact that she told him she loves him, knowing that that's something that he needed to hear at that moment, I think that that takes extraordinary strength. And we hear this about heroes all the time that when there is a crisis, they just do what needs to be done and everything is calm, cool and collected. And then you hear her breaking down by the end of that call, you know, with all the relief and just all the overwhelming feelings for her. So I think that's just incredible. Lynn. It is incredible. Thank you guys so much. Great.